things with dismay um, about the European Convention on Human Rights. I, I think it's a big consideration for Scotland, obviously, because the uh, Human Rights Act is signed into uh, the devolution legislation, which gives us our parliament, etc. So the bigger concern here, I think it's, it's not just as simple as opt out, because you know, it isn't just in our legislation, or some parts of it are. You're right, it is incompatible. Uh, we either, in my opinion, you either kind of sign up wholesale or you don't. Um, I'm not comfortable with trying to cherry pick bits of legislation. Mm. What do you think about that, Michael? Because you had a post this week I saw, which was about choosing your kind of human rights future, and it contrasted a very enthusiastic statement by the Scottish government with a comment by Theresa May. Um, And actually, if you look into the Scottish National Party's record in government, you will find that several members of parliament have expressed actually quite high levels of discomfort with fundamental human rights norms sometimes, and sometimes they get their photographs taken with Amnesty International. And I think with the best will in the world, and I'm I'm generally speaking a supporter of the Scottish National Party, their views on human rights are are basically incoherent and, and often deployed quite strategically depending on what controversy of the day requires. That's a fair comment. Um, you know what you said, the presupposing that Alex Simon's in favour of human rights. Well, you have to presuppose that he wasn't saying that for real politic reasons in the first place. But um, <laughs> uh, like um, the thing there is that part of the SNP strategy, whether it's for good or for ill, if you think it's a winner or not, is a lot of the things that they're saying in the run up to the referendum are not let's not rock the boat too much you know let's uh, things will be basically the same but with some good differences instead of no we're going to complete which is you know there's no discussion keep the queen as head of state we'll keep the pound and it could be like a mix and match strategy you know like where we can create clear daylight between us and them in a good way we'll do that and where we don't want to rock the boat we won't rock the boat uh, personally, I'm in favour of a little more rocking the boat. I think, um, although I, I am in favour uh, of obviously kind of implementation of EZHR um, fully um, in an independent Scotland, there is also the argument that the SNP could perhaps make um, that they are listening to the public in, 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 in votes on prisoners. Um, and so perhaps they're balancing uh, the opinion that they think that the public have on it, um, which isn't a necessarily a cynical thing to do, but actually being representative uh, of public opinion. Yeah, there's absolutely a case for that. You could then mm. go. You could then go into. I know this is getting into quite dark territory, but you could then go into saying that a lot of the views on justice come from a fairly rabid right wing media, and sometimes, and therefore, it's kind of kowtowing to that a little bit. Mm, and I suppose that there is a slight problem with that logic in terms of current levels of support for independence. If the SNP on the constitution goes to where the public is, then, then chances are they'd have to abandon this independence referendum altogether. Um, which, <laughs> We've got an <laughs> overall majority, Mr. Tickell. That's the indication <laughs> people want to have the debate. <laughs> yeah, I would of agree. Seats, I would of, course, of, of seats, of course, not votes. Yes. Yeah. I was just being mischievous and horrible. I've I'm in that mood today. Mike Michael was ill. I'm in mischievous horrible. Yeah, I've been I've been terribly grumpy today as well. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that might be an excellent moment to round off the podcast. I think. Thank you so much, Natalie, for coming on again and sharing your thoughts with us. And good luck with your electoral hopes. Is it next week that you'll be having the final? Yeah. Hear about the- uh- this time next week, uh, uh, the vote will be done and dusted. Well, there you uh, are. Well, um, I know that we shall we shall hear how you get on, and I hope we'll have you back on bef- before too long. Um, and Michael, I hope that your ague clears up and that you recover to full strength and you avoid your bike forevermore. I'll, I'll do my best, I think. <laughs> okay, oh, well, we'll see you next week, and we'll be back with another show and another another range of leathering on a range of different topics. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye. 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 Sur mon lit à bouffer sa langue en buvant Prends mon whisky quant à moi un peu dormi Vie débris Mais j'ai dû dormir dans la boutière Où j'ai eu un flash Ouh. En quatre couleurs Allez hop un matin Une louloute est venue chez moi Poupée de cellophane cheveux chinois Un sparadrap une gueule de bois A bu ma bière
bière dans un grand verre en caoutchouc Comme un alien dans son igloo Ça plane pour moi Ça plane pour moi Ça plane pour moi Envoyé du paillasson, limé, ruiné, vidé, comblé. You are the king of the divan, et le mode est en passant. I am the king of the divan. We've got a complaint in about your grotesque misrepresentation of their undoubtedly legitimate political grouping, and the government regulator would give you a spanky for that. Uh, you, you, sorry, sorry, I might cut that bit out.